Hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Maximo. And I think that we have Rina. Thank you for being here. Hi. Okay. Uh, it, it, this would be your first class with uh, English Corporativo or, or have you received classes before? Uh, well, with English Corporativo, yes, it's my first time. Mm -hmm. I studied English at high school a long time ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, not too much. Uh, but yeah, it's my first class with this program. And I'm not sure what uh, what are we going to do today, but here I am. Okay, no problem. We are just going to uh, review some topics about um, the platform. And uh, let's see, you are in module three, right? English Intermedio Modulo 3. Yeah. Yes, okay. teacher. Okay, perfect. Now we are going to, you, do you have access to the platform? Yes. Yes, okay. Perfect, so that's what we are going to do, just to review the platform and just to review if you have any question, if you have any doubt, if you have any, like you didn't understand anything, we are going to practice a little bit and we are going to um, just to develop those topics, okay? But first of all, we are, I'm going to do the presentation. I'm going to wait a little bit because I don't know if somebody else will will join the class. No sé si alguien más se va a unir después a la clase, justamente a las ocho. Y eso es algo le, que les quería decir, eh, que eh, podríamos empezar la clase a las 7.55 porque a las nueve hay otra clase. Entonces, para cerrar todo y abrir todo de la otra clase, entonces... El, vamos a estar empezando como cinco minutos antes, solo cinco minutos, ¿verdad? Eh, pero al principio nada más esperamos a los que vengan y ya después este, empezamos a desarrollar los temas, etc. Vamos a ver. Solo voy a compartir información general primero para ver si ustedes pues tienen alguna pregunta, como tal vez es la primera vez que están con los cursos, pues puede que tengan este tipo de preguntas, ¿verdad? So, let me see here. Ok. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. yes, right? That's okay. teacher. <laughs> Perfect. So that's what we are going to study right now, English Intermedio Modulo 3. Let me see here. Now we are four. Okay, we have Maximo, Rina, and Carla Michelle. Nice to meet you all. We are about to start. Just let me see here. Rosemary is joining right now. But I don't know. I will stop sharing the screen because I cannot see you. Okay, so we have Arena Guadalupe, Maximo Arteaga, Carla Michelle, and Rosemary. I don't know if, if somebody else is going to join, but I'm going to begin right now, okay? Voy a decir esto en español. Eh, si ustedes también no entienden alguna clase, también me pueden decir, ¿verdad? Eh, teacher, no entendí, por favor, explíquenlo en español, etc. Pero por el momento, vamos a hacer la presentación. Y vamos a darles la información acerca del curso. So, este es inglés 
intermedio módulo 3. My name is Jorge Asensio. Mi, mi nombre es Jorge Asensio. You can call me teacher. Me pueden decir teacher. Me pueden decir Jorge. Mr. Asensio, como ustedes más lo deseen. Este, vamos a empezar las clases a las 7.55 para terminarlas a las 8.55, ya que las clases duran una hora. ¿Por qué? Porque después tengo otra clase a las 9, y para cerrar todo, como les decía a los que estaban antes, y abrir todas las diapositivas de la, o actividades que pueda tener, ¿verdad? Solo tengo esos cinco minutos para hacerlo, así que normalmente vamos a empezar a las 7.55, pero ustedes se pueden unir a las 8, ya que al principio solo reviso si tienen alguna pregunta, algún problema con la plataforma, etcétera. Eh, la plataforma es esta, ¿verdad? Y la manera en que trabajamos es que ustedes revisan el material. Nosotros también en clase lo vamos a revisar. Y ustedes van avanzando a su ritmo, ¿verdad? Este, y terminar, por ejemplo, la sección 1 y la sección 2, terminarla esta semana. Esta semana, normalmente las clases son de lunes a jueves, ¿verdad? Pero para terminar exactamente el 28 de febrero, que es martes, vamos a tener clases este viernes 10 y este viernes 17. Si no les afecta, pues pueden venir y si les afecta o en algún día ustedes no pueden venir, pues nada más en el grupo de WhatsApp me dicen soy eh, Máximo o soy Rina. Estoy en el grupo de 8 a 9 de eh, módulo 3 de intermedio y no voy a poder llegar porque tengo este inconveniente o etcétera entonces ya ustedes me hacen saber ya pero eh, este viernes 10 y el otro viernes sí vamos a tener clases este ya después sería la semana del 20 al 24 solo de lunes a jueves y la última de febrero del 27 y el 28 verdad para acabar el mes entonces, eso sería lo que vamos a hacer. Ustedes, en su tiempo libre, en su casa, pues empiezan a hacer estos ejercicios, ¿verdad? En los ejercicios de la plataforma, ven los objetivos, ven el material, y ustedes empiezan a hacer los ejercicios. Si tienen alguna pregunta, me dicen, teacher, en el knowledge check de la sección 1, pues ahí no sé por qué es esta o no me acepta ninguna porque a veces la plataforma tiene problemas, se le reporta y entonces ya decimos que tenemos problemas con esta. Por ejemplo, en esta, ¿verdad? A veces es difícil eh, poner la, eh, el verbo, a veces no lo acepta o lo tiene que poner uno con cierto apóstrofe, entonces es, a veces es complicado, pero por eso si tienen alguna pregunta o alguna duda me la reportan, ¿verdad? También me pueden hacer las preguntas a través de WhatsApp y yo se las voy a responder. Entonces ahora vamos a conocernos entre todos porque es la primera clase vamos a ver un poco de material y mañana pues vamos a continuar como ya les dije, my name, eh, vamos a hacer la presentación en inglés bueno, esta es la presentación, la vamos a hacer un, en un rato. Primero le voy a dar las indicaciones. Y estas son, ¿verdad? Es necesario tener el 80% en promedio de tareas, o sea, que completo tiene que tener el 80% de las tareas y evaluaciones para poder completar el curso satisfactoriamente, que son las tareas de la plataforma que les acabo de enseñar. Las tareas se encuentran en la plataforma y se recomienda trabajar en ellas justo después de cada clase. Ustedes pueden ir adelantando, si digamos que ya mañana o el miércoles ya terminaron la sección 1, pueden continuar con la sección 2, o si en esta te semana terminan con la sección 2, pueden continuar con la sección 3, por eso no hay problema. Todas las tareas de los temas ya cubiertos tienen que estar completas antes de cada viernes a la medianoche, ya que ese registro es enviado a Insafor semanalmente. Material de apoyo será compartido a criterio del profesor en formato digital. Es decir, que por ejemplo, esta presentación, si ustedes la quieren tener al final de la semana, yo se las voy a compartir en un grupo de WhatsApp y así todas las presentaciones que vayamos teniendo. Si hay algún libro, por ejemplo, o algún video, algún link, pues van a estar incluidos ahí o también yo se los voy a compartir. Así está dividida la semana, aunque en este caso, ¿cómo vamos a tener? Este, esta semana, la siguiente, la siguiente, como tres semanas completas. 
y dos días, ¿verdad? Los últimos dos días de febrero, pues vamos a ir avanzando de una manera diferente. Esta semana, como son dos secciones, creo que vamos a cubrir la sección 1 y la sección 2. Y la próxima semana, la sección 3, el midterm. Y si es posible, vamos a cubrir un poco de la sección 4. Para terminar la última semana este, con la sección 4, la sección 5 y el final exam. Así es más o menos como se va, vamos a ir trabajando. ¿verdad? Luego de esto tenemos normas de convivencia, ¿verdad? Botón silencio, eso es por si ustedes tienen algún tipo de background noise o sonido. Eh, a veces uno está explicando, hay un compañero que está participando y este, se oye un ruido al fondo, ¿verdad? Entonces dice, teacher, no le escuché a alguien que por favor ponga mute, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, si van a participar, quiten el mute o levanten la mano y pueden participar, ¿verdad? En esto no se va a tomar lista de asistencia, pero yo siempre miro que eh, ustedes estén presentes. Tienen que tener su nombre completo para yo poder ver, porque estas clases quedan grabadas y también si las revisan, ahí se va a ver su nombre, ¿verdad? Sonia, Patricia, Claudia, Rosemary, Carla, Alicia, ahí se va a ver su nombre. Eh, cámara encendida, eh, si es posible, ustedes pueden tener su cámara encendida, si es posible. Eh, yo sé que algunos a veces están trabajando, algunos que vienen en el, todavía en el, en, el, en el bus o en el carro y me dicen, yo ahorita no voy a tener la, la cámara encendida porque no estoy en mi casa, ¿verdad? Si es posible, enciéndanla, por favor. Así pues yo puedo ver si están entendiendo, si ustedes tienen alguna pregunta. Eh, ya que estamos a distancia, es, es mejor así, pero si... Por ejemplo, hoy me pueden decir, hoy estoy enfermo, no voy a, solo voy a escuchar la clase, no voy a participar. Está bien. También uso de chats. Pueden también preguntarme a través de chats, a través de WhatsApp. Levantar la mano siempre, eh, bueno, si quieren participar. Y siempre mantener el respeto, que sería, pues, a veces hay opiniones o diferentes maneras de ser. Pero siempre hay que tener respeto por los compañeros y también con los maestros, ¿verdad? Eso ya lo uh, saben. Y pues, como ya saben, la asistencia es el 80% de las clases. Avance y desarrollo de la plataforma de aprendizaje. Eh, estos son los horarios, la, una hora, ¿verdad? Que vamos a estar trabajando hasta las 8.55. Y luego ustedes van a obtener su diploma. Para que ustedes no tengan ningún problema con su diploma, traten de avanzar en la plataforma, ¿verdad? Y al finalizar, pues ustedes van a tener su su eh, diploma de este módulo. ¿Alguna pregunta, alguna duda que quieran decirme en este momento? No sé si todos son nuevos o si ya han recibido clases anteriormente con este tipo de modalidad. ¿Alguna pregunta? ¿No questions? Ok. Entonces, vamos a presentarnos, como yo les decía, my name is Jorge Asensio, you can call me teacher, you can call me Jorge, you can call me George, you can call me Mr. Asensio, no problem. I would like to know why do you want to learn English? What is the reason, what motivates you to be here at 8 p.m., right? After your job or after your classes, why do you want to learn English? And second... I want to know what do you like to do in your free time, right? Like, for example, a hobby. If you like to work, if you like to watch TV, if you like to sleep, no problem. And that's something that I would like to know right now. So I want one volunteer. Please uh, introduce yourself. Say your name. Why do you want to learn English? And what do you like to do in your free time, please? One volunteer. Un voluntario nada más. ¿Alguien que quiera participar? Participar. Alicia, ok, go ahead. Alicia Escobar, go ahead. Uh, hi, my name is Alicia. Uh -huh. uh, 
I want to learn English for add these to my skills. And in my free time, I read books. You read books. What is the last book that you read? Um, Ripley. What is the last book that you read? Yes, uh, Ripley. Ah, uh, Ripley. Ripley and Ripley and Peligro. The book was uh, the book was in Spanish. Oh, okay, very good, perfect. Nice to meet you, Alicia. Very good. Now someone else. Alguien más que quiera decir el nombre, por qué quiere aprender inglés y qué le gusta hacer en su tiempo libre. Somebody else? Maximo, go ahead, Maximo. My name is Maximo Antonio Arteaga. I want to learn English to, to speak, listening, and read. And this language I like to do in my, I like to do in my free time to watch TV only teacher. Okay, very good. Someone else, alguien más. Hello. Hello, go ahead, Claudia. My name is Claudia, Claudia Chamorro. Uh, I want to learn English because I like to travel in other country and is difficult uh, talk with other persons or uh, my hobby is watch TV. Watch TV, okay, very good. Nice to meet you, Claudia, very good. Patricia, go ahead, Patricia. Good evening, teacher. My name is Patricia Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. I want to learn English for my work. I like to do in my free time sleep mm -hmm. and cooking. Okay, very good, very good. Nice to meet you, Patricia. Now let's see Rosemary, go ahead. Um. My name is Rosemary Rizalal. I want to learn English because I want to have a better job. Um, I like reading about history and listening to music. Okay, very good. Nice to meet you, Rosemary. Very good. Another person, please. We have Rosemary, we have Alicia, we have Maximo, Claudia, Patricia, someone else. Hi, my name is Rina Sanchez and I want to learn English because I think it's very important for your job and um, if you wanna travel, you can English is uh, everybody um, in most of the countries. The people speak English, and it's it's really important. And I like in my free time I like to cook and watch TV. That's all. Okay. Okay. Very good, Rina. Very good. Very good English. And uh, nice to meet you. Let's see another person. Agimas. Jeffrey, okay, go, go ahead. Hi, my name is Jeffrey. And the reason because I want to learn English is get a better job. And in my free time, I like play video games. Okay, nice to meet you, Jeffrey. Another person?
Let's see another person who hasn't pre uh, introduced themselves. Sonia, go ahead, Sonia. Hello, my name is Sonia Araceli Sonia. Mm -hmm. uh, my hobby uh, are listen to music and watch the movie. And I want to learn English, English in case I uh, have to the opportunity to travel. Mm -hmm. It will be easy to communicate. Yes, that's really useful if you travel. Very good, perfect. Nice to meet you, Sonia. Another person? Nice you. Okay, nice to meet you. Somebody else? Okay, Carla. No problem. Okay, uh, Carla has some problems with uh, the microphone. No problem. Yes, Melissa, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Good night. Um, my name is Melissa, and I want to learn English because I want to apply to a better position in my actual job. Mm -hmm. And my in my free time, I like to see movies, read some books, and also playing um, playing games online. Games online. In my PlayStation, yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Nice to meet you. Nice and, to meet you. All. <laughs> and what what would you be? What would be the the expectations that you have for this class? Uh, I would like to improve my vocabulary mm -hmm. because I read and I can um, I I don't understand a little bit of English, but I want to improve my pronunciation, um, better um, improve my accent, and also the listening part is important for me. Very good, very good, perfect. We are going to practice all of that. Okay. Yes, Jeffrey, you can go ahead. No problem. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Now, let's see. Uh, another person, please. Or that's it. I guess that everybody participated, right? Claudia, Carla has problems. Maximo, Alicia, Jeffrey, Melissa, uh, Patricia, Rina, Sonia, and Rosemary. Okay. Very good. So nice to meet you all. I think that everybody's here because of that, right? Because you want to learn English and you want to better your accent. You want to better your grammar. You want to better your listening, right? So we are going to try that. Um, have you checked the platform already? ¿Ya revisaron la plataforma? Yes. Okay. What, not, what? Not, sure. not yet. Okay. Not yet. Melissa probably did. Let me see here. So this is the platform. You can read the object, the objective here. And we are going to review the objectives over there also. Have you watched this, this video already? Passive with by. Rina, go ahead. Teacher, I got a question about the WhatsApp. Uh, uh -huh. The group. Uh, I joined to a group, but I don't know if is a group for all the other students or is a group of just us? It's just for us. It's just mm -hmm. for us. It's just for us. Um, we are going to be sharing there the material also. Uh, so it's, it's if you want to ask something, it's for us only, right? This group. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. So what you have here on the platform is just some things, right? And uh, uh, videos, grammar rules, and vocabulary, right? So we are going to have like an extended version of it in this moment, right? This is the passive with by. Um, I don't know if somebody has studied before the passive voice. Do you know what that is? Do you know what the passive voice is? La voz pasiva? Do you know that? Have you learned that previously? No, for me, to be honest, it's the first time. First time. And for the rest, it's the first time too? Yes. 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 
Okay. Maybe, but I don't remember exactly. I think that I have learned something, but I don't remember. Okay, we are going to remember, no problem. But first of all, we are going to introduce the topic, okay? So, no problem. We are going to begin here. And this is the first objective of the class. In this class, participants will be first introduced to passive voice using by. But first, we are going to learn vocabulary, right? It's really worth seeing. Famous landmark. What is the meaning of landmark? Do you know the meaning? What is landmark? What is the meaning of it? Who knows? Marca de tierra? No, right? Emblematic. Emblematic, probably. Uh, sites? Mm -hmm. Yes, sites, like places, right? A oh, landmark, places. yes. A landmark is a very famous place in a country, let's say, right? For example, the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China, La Gran Muralla China, is a landmark. The Colosseum, right, is another landmark. Machu Picchu, you know Machu Picchu? That is a landmark. The Statue of Liberty, that's a landmark. And the Eiffel Tower or Eiffel Tower, that's another landmark in Paris, right? So uh, that is, those are landmarks that we are going to study there uh, later. Uh, we are going to learn which one was a gift, which one was used for events and, and different places, right? So that is a landmark. Do you have any questions about that? Preguntas? No, right? Everything's clear as crystal. Very good. Now, let's see. We have landmarks in El Salvador, right? What landmarks do we have? For example, Iglesia del Rosario, right? Do you know where is that located? ¿Dónde está localizada la Iglesia del Rosario? Where is that located? In the center of El Salvador. In the downtown. In the exactly. historic center. Downtown. Exactly. It's in downtown, right? I Iglesia Rosario, it is located in the eastern side of Plaza Libertad. Mm -hmm. So that is a landmark. It is recognized as one of the iconic buildings in Centro Historico from San Salvador. Have you visited Iglesia Rosario? Have you gone there? No. No. Yes. 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 Right. yes. yes. I've, 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 I've been there, I guess, one time. And it's beautiful from the outside. It doesn't seem like very big and everything. But if you go inside, it's really beautiful. All, all of the colors and um, um, the windows, right, that it has full of colors. It's, it's really beautiful. So that is a really famous landmark from El Salvador. Do you know any other landmark in El Salvador? Do you know Metropol any other? Uh -huh. Metropolitan Cathedral. Uh -huh, very good. Uh, cathedral Metropolitan, very good. The, the, the cathedral from San Salvador, right? Very good. What else? What else do you know? The National Theater. The National Theater. Very good. What else? Tazumar Ruins. Tazumar Ruins. Very good. So Salvador del Mundo. Salvador del Mundo. That's another one. We have another one here. Here is Hoya de Serena, right? It says it is located in the vicinity of San Juan Pico and Las Flores, right? In the department of La Libertad. It was inhabited at least since the year 400 and it was abandoned around the year 600 due to the eruption of Laguna Caldera. Have you visited Joya de Seren? No. No? Okay, so we need to <laughs> we need to do a trip, right? We need to do a trip to Joya de Seren, uh, the cathedrals, right? All of them. Let's see another one. 
Puerto de la Libertad. Have you visited? Yes, right. Or no. Puerto de la Libertad is another landmark. It is considered the closest port to the city of San Salvador. It has mechanical games, which is a novelty. A novelty, okay? Let's see here. Someone is writing. Yes, Alicia says yes. Okay, very good, Alicia. Now we have La Puerta del Diablo. That's another landmark, right? La Puerta del Diablo is a rock formation and tourist site located in the municipality of Panchimalco. It is located one kilometer from Balboa Park. Very good. Let's see what else. Lago de Cuarepeque or Cuarepeque Lake. Have you visited Cuarepeque Lake? Yes? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. right. Very good. Lake Cuarepeque is a lake of volcanic origin located 18 kilometers south of the city in Santa Ana in the municipality of El Congo. So Cuarepeque, I don't know why it's called Cuarepeque because everybody says that it's not in Cuarepeque. It's in El Congo, right? But the name of the lake is Cuarepeque, right? It has an island, an island called Isla del Cerro or Teopan. The toponym Cuarepeque means hill of snakes in the Nahuatl language. So that is the that is the meaning of Cuarepeque. Hills of snakes. What is hills of snakes in Spanish? El Cerro de las Serpientes. Exactly, Cerro de las Serpientes. Very good, very good, perfect. Let's see if I have another one here. What's mean toponym? Toponym is to Topon toponym is like como toponimo or the meaning, right? The meaning of Cuarepeque. That is a toponym. So the meaning of Cuarepeque is hill of snakes. The Cuarepeque is the toponym. Very good. Now we are going to study um, landmarks right now, right? And the passive voice. So uh, we are checking different places right now. And this is the Great Wall of China. Uh, can you read, um, are, are you able to see the picture? Pueden ver la, la imagen? Yeah. Okay, can you read it please? Like for example, Sonia? Yeah, are you reading it, Sonia? Because you're mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. The, the Great Wall of China was begun in 20, 2000. 200? 200? Uh, sorry, 200. Uh, 14 mm -hmm. BC before Christ. Christ? It is. Christ, I'm sorry, it is the largest um, man made structure ever built. Exactly. So the Great Wall of China was begun in 2014 BC. BC means before Christ, right? It is the largest man made structure ever built. Do you have any question about any word? Alguna pregunta de alguna palabra? No questions? Okay, very good. So we are using there the passive voice, right? Actually, we use them in here, for example, in many descriptions, right? Like this, it is located, uh, it's in passive voice. For example, it is recognized. That is passive also, right? It is recognized. But in this case, it is in past, right? Was begun. What is the meaning of was begun? ¿Qué significa was begun? The words in red. What is the meaning? The gray wall of China was begun. What is the meaning of was begun? Fue empezada. Construido. Fue empezada. Ajá. Fue comenzada. So was begun. Fue comenzada. So we use it. Uh, we use the passive voice. It says here, if we don't know who did the action, 
We use the passive voice if there's no doer of the action. Or we use the passive voice if the fact is more important than the doer of the action. Uh, probably here in the Great Wall of China, probably we do know who started like probably an emperor. But in this case, um, the Great Wall of China uh, is more important, right? The fact is more important than who did it, right? The largest man-made structure ever built. Es la estructura hecha por el hombre más grande jamás construida, right? So what's begun is passive voice. We are, pay attention to those words in red. The Colosseum. Let's see, Rosemary, can you read the Colosseum, please? Or are you able to, to read it or it's too small for you? Yes. Okay. Um, the Colosseum, Colosseum in Rome was happening in 18 uh -huh. AD Anno Domini. It was sometimes piled with water for sheep battles. It was used for the theatrical concept and public spectacles. Spectacles. Very good, very good. So the Colosseum in Rome was opened in 80 AD. Anno Domini, right? It was sometimes filled with water for sheep battles. It was used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles. Questions about that? Preguntas acerca alguna palabra que no entiendan? So it says it was sometimes filled with water. A veces era llenado con agua el coliseo, ¿verdad? For sheep battles. What is a sheep battle? What is that? Sheep battles. Batallas Batalla. navales. Batallas yeah. navales de barcos, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine that. I, I never knew that, that in the coliseum it was filled with water for sheep battles, right? And also we already knew that it was used for gladiatorial contests, right? In public as spectacles. So all of the words in red is also passive voice. Was opened, was filled, was used. All of that is passive voice. We have more information here about the passive voice. It says the passive voice is used to show interest in the person of object that experiences an action rather than the person of object that performs the action. In other words, uh, the most important thing of person becomes the subject of the sentence. So what do you understand about this, Rina, Maximo, Claudia? What do you understand right now about the passive voice? When you expose the function of the uh -huh. place in the past, very good, very good. When you expose the function of the place in the past. So the passive voice is used to show interest in the object, right? And no nos preocupamos por quién lo hizo. Por ejemplo, el Coliseo aquí nunca dice quién lo hizo. Pero sabemos que fue abierto en el 80 ano domini antes de Cristo. It was sometimes feel uh, que fue llenado, ¿verdad? ¿Quién lo llenó? No sabemos, ¿verdad? que fue usado para uh, concursos de gladiadores. ¿Por quién? No sabemos, pero el, el, no es importante quién lo hizo, sino quién recibe la acción, ¿verdad? Esa es la importante. En este caso, ¿quién recibe la acción de todas esas acciones? El coliseo. Entonces, aquí, ¿quién hace la acción? No es importante. Who is the doer of the action is not important, right? The Statue of Liberty. Let's see, Maximo, can you read the Statue of Liberty? The Statue of Liberty in the New York was opened in 1,000 one 
1,886. It was a gift to the United States from the people of France to represent the friendship between the two countries. Very good, very good. So the Statue of Liberty in New York was opened in 1886. And uh, when we are using years, we can use it like that, right? Cuando decimos los años, lo podemos decir así, 1886. Because uh, it's correct saying, uh, if, if we say 1,886, it's okay, but it's kind of long. But uh, years are in pairs, right? En parejas, lo pueden decir, 1886. 1991, etc. So it was a gift to the United States from the people of the of France to represent the friendship between the two countries. So this was what this one was a gift from France, right? To the United States. What is the passive voice here? Where is it? Where is the passive voice? Was open. Was opened. Exactly. Open, right? Was opened. So we have here some rules about the passive voice with simple past. In este caso, estamos viendo nada más la passive voice con el pasado, with the simple past. And it says the passive changes the focus of a sentence. For the simple past, use the past of be plus past participle. So it's saying here how we form the passive voice in past. Aquí está diciendo cómo formamos el, la voz pasiva en pasado. Pero la podemos formar siempre en otros tiempos, en presente, en presente continuo. Passive voice we have in different tenses. For example, active. This is active voice. The president opened the building in 1931. The president opened the building. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. You see? The president is not important here anymore. So it's not at the beginning. The building is important. So it's it says here, right? It. It is the building, right? The building was opened by the president. Number two, an American architect designed the building. It was designed by an American architect. An American architect here is important. Here in the passive voice is not important. The important thing is the building, the one receiving the action, right? It was designed by an American architect. La voz pasiva cambia el enfoque de la oración. So um, that's the meaning of the passive voice. Do you have any question right now? <laughs> because I see your faces like this, like this, right? So do you have any question? Questions about the passive voice? Preguntas de la voz pasiva hasta este momento? No questions? Everything's clear? Oh, yes. very good. Yeah, yes. I very think we uh, uh -huh. need more examples, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have more examples. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Pero lo importante es que entiendan que en la voz pasiva no importa quién lo hizo, ¿verdad? Sino que quién recibe la acción. That's the important thing. Let's see if we have something here. Mal Melissa, can you read this one, please? The, uh, the Eiffel Tower or Eiffel Tower. Melissa Flores, are you there? Sorry, I wasn't mute. Okay. <laughs> the... The Eiffel Tower in Paris was completed in, um, I don't know how to read uh, the date, sorry. 1889. 1889. It was built for the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. At the time the tower was built, many people were shocked in Eiffel was criticized and accused of disregarding engineering protocols. Exactly, very good. So the Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower in Paris was completed in 1889. It was built for the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. And at the time the tower was built, many people were shocked and Eiffel was criticized and accused 
of disregarding engineering protocols. So he was accused, right? Very good. Questions about this? Preguntas que no entienden? Shocked, criticized, revolution, built, or you understand everything? Anything that you don't understand? Everything's clear? Okay, let's continue then. So we are going to have um, some exercises here just to check if you are getting the idea of the passive voice. Let's see, it says, my sister, this book in 2010 wrote, I want you to um, order the, the, the words and write a sentence with those words. My sister, this book in 2010 wrote, what is the sentence that I'm trying to write there? Inactive or passive? Inactive, mm -hmm. inactive. My sister wrote this book in 2010. Very good. My sister wrote this book in 2010. What is the meaning of the sentence? Let's see, Rina. It means that some people has a sister that wrote a book uh -huh. in, in some time ago, a long time ago. Exactly. But, in, in Spanish, if you want to translate it, what would be the translation in Spanish? Okay, que mi hermana escribió este libro en el 2010. Está dándole, como nos explicaba, eh, en ese sentido, su hermana. Mm -hmm. Very está good. escribiendo una acción de ella. Ella. So, who's the doer? My sister, right? My mm -hmm. sister did it. Who did it? My sister. What did she wrote? What did she write, sorry? A book, a right? A book, exactly. So who wrote the book? My sister. Uh, what did she write? A book, very good. That's clear, right? Eso está claro. Okay, perfect. Now, can we transform this active sentence into passive? Let's transform this active sentence into passive. Somebody else? Me, teacher. I, okay, go ahead. Let's see. This book was wrote in 2010 from my sister. Very good. This book was wrote in 2010 from my sister, right? Let's see. Very good, very good. Uh, the sentence really good. But we have some details there. Let's see. My sister, this book in 2010, written was written why do we use written and not wrote porque utilizamos written and no utilizamos wrote que es written además verdad what is that who knows porque utilizamos written very good maximo very good let's see the the pass the, the passive sentence this book was written by my sister in 2010. You see the difference? My sister is not important anymore. I am interested in the book, right? Like Eiffel Tower, right? Eiffel Tower is the important thing here. So my sister goes at the end. Hasta el final se va my sister. What is the important thing now? The book, this book was written by por my sister, mi hermana, when in 2010. If I want to, I can omit 2010, or if I want to, well, I can omit my sister also, right? This book was written in 2010, right? Because my sister is not important anymore. If I want to mention it, I can mention it in this way, by my sister. So, so, so you're getting the idea now, right? It's easier now, right? Or no, it's or, or it's not easier. Está difícil, está fácil. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. It's easy or difficult for you guys. 
teacher? Yes. The conjugation of the verb is right, grout, grouten. Yes, that is the conjugation, right? The present is right. The past right. is wrote. wrote. And the past participle? Written. Written. Uh, written. 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 Ah, okay. So we use past participles to create the passive voice. We use the past participles, okay? And the... Uh, and, uh... Mm, the word has or have has written have written has written yes but that is a, something different that has written is another tense ese es un tiempo mm -hmm. correcto uh, it's correct it's correct but in this passive voice is was written we use the verb to be right en la voz pasiva utilizamos el verbo to be Okay. Isn't clear. Yes, but we are we are going we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's see. Now we are going to watch the video and you will let me know if you understand something. Vamos a ver el video. Vamos a ver si ustedes entienden algo de lo que explican en el video. Okay. This is the video about the passive voice. Let me know if you are able to listen to it. Díganme si lo pueden escuchar. Hi, welcome to another. Can you listen? Yes? yes. Yes. Okay, let's listen to it. Another module. This time we'll study passive with by. But before we go deep into the topic, let me tell you what passive voice does to a sentence. Passive voice changes the emphasis on a sentence. In other words, we may say the same thing in a different way. You may be wondering when to use it. Passive voice is the best way to express an idea when, number one, we don't know who did the action. Number two, there's no doer of an action. And number three, the fact is more important than the doer of an action. As always, I will ask you to stay around and stay for the explanation. We will compare active with passive, so you see the difference and notice the emphasis on each one. We will give you examples of each use, as well as the structure of passive voice. Passive with by simple past the passive changes the focus of a sentence for the simple past use the past of be plus past participle active the president opened the building in 1931 passive it was opened by the president in 1931 active an american architect designed the building Passive. It was designed by an American architect. I have this scrambled sentence for you. My sister, this book, in 2010, wrote. Can you try to unscramble the sentence and make sense of it? I will give you 15 seconds. Great. So we came up with, my sister wrote this book in 2010. Now in English, we can say the same things in another way. Let's work with another scramble sentence and let's do the same and scramble it and make sense of it. This time I will give you 20 seconds. My sister, this book, by in 2010, written was. Were you able to do it? I hope you did. This book was written by my sister in 2010. Now let's take a look at each sentence. In this first sentence, which by the way is in active voice, the emphasis is on my sister. It was not Susanna who wrote the book, it was my sister. 
This book was written by my sister. This book is the object, was, was or were. Written is the past participle of the verb. By, by, my sister is the subject. In this second sentence, we're using passive voice and the emphasis is on this book. The most important fact is that the book was written. Now let's write examples for the uses previously mentioned in our intro video. Remember, we don't know who did the action. My house was broken into on Friday. Who broke into our house? We don't know. Number two, there is no doer of the action. He was killed in an earthquake. There is no doer of this action. The last use, the fact is more important than the doer of the action. My dog was run over by a car. What happened to my dog is more important than the doer. Finally, let's go over the structure of the passive and simple past. Because we're using passive in simple past, this is what we'll use. Was, were, plus past participle. Before we go, we want you to work on the following sentences so you're able to practice. Our sentences are in active voice. Your work is to switch them to passive voice. Please write them on our discussion box. Number one, mom prepared the food. Number two, all the employees read the memo. Number three, the boy ate the cake. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, is, it, is it clearer now or is more confusing now? <laughs> is it clear or more confusing? It's clear. It's clear, it's clear. Yeah, she gave very good examples in the video, but we have here um, the structure, right? As she said in the video, we have active voice. Active voice is when we, uh, how we speak normally. Así hablamos normalmente en active voice, ¿verdad? Siempre, pero en passive voice, we changes, it changes, right? So in active voice, it says, my sister wrote this book. This is the structure, subject, verb and object right my sister wrote this book subject is my sister in this case the passive voice is this book right the object becomes the subject so this is at the end it comes at the beginning then i need to use the verb to be the verb to be the past of the verb to be what is what is the past of the verb to be was or were right perfect was or were and then the past participles of the verbs what is the past past participles of write or wrote written written exactly then if i want to mention who did the action i need to add by por and then the doer my sister the book was written by my sister you see Active and passive, it's different, right? It's different. Now we only have, um, let's see, seven minutes left. But this is another example, right? For example, uh, this is uh, active and passive voice, right? This is the comparison. This is clear, but I confuse the structure of the sentence. Exactly, Jose. Uh, it says, what subject does the active and passive, the focus on the action, right? Ram killed Ravan, right? Ram killed Ravan. Ravan was killed by Ram, right? The same, right? It's kind of confusing because of the names also, but Ram is the doer of the action. And then at the end, it's, it's not important anymore or it's less important, right? So, but we are going to do more exercises. Let's see. I think that I have more examples here, but let's see here. Yes, I will look for more examples because I think that that will be easier for you. But we are going to do something right now. Just to practice the last five minutes, we are going to write more examples, okay? We are going to do what she told us to do, right? Examples. Now we are going to write the three sentences that she mentioned at the end of the video. All the 
And for example, we are going to do the first one, okay? Mom prepared the food. What is the meaning of mom prepared the food? ¿Qué significa eso? Mamá preparó la comida. Very good. Mom prepared the food. Very good. The food this this is prepared. in past, right? Esta oración está en pasado. Right? This is in past. So we are going to transform it in passive voice, but the passive voice will be in past. What would be the passive voice of mom prepared the food? The food was prepared mm -hmm. by mom. The food was prepared, prepared by mom by mom very good or my mom right very good the food you see the, she did the, the food now the food is the important thing here this is the important thing so it goes la comida fue preparada por mamá la comida fue preparada that's how we translate it we are going to create the next one. It says, all the employees read the memo. Now, that one is in past, right? All the employees read the memo. What is the passive voice? The memo. Uh -huh. The memo. Was. Was. Read. Read. By all employees. Very good. Perfect. All the employees, you see? And the last one. The boy ate the cake. The boy ate the cake is also in past, right? Simple past. The boy ate the cake. What is the passive voice for that one? Mm -hmm. the cake the was cake eaten was eaten right eaten eaten mm -hmm. very good by, by the, boy. the boy by the boy very good you see so this is the passive you see the cake was eaten by the boy exactly jose so you see so what do we need to know to create the passive voice? We need to know if it is in, in present, in past, right? So if it is in past, the verb to be will be in past. And we need to know past participles. Prepared is a past participle. Read is a past participle. Eaten is another past participle. So tomorrow we are going to practice. We are going to review again this uh, structure and we are going to review past participles, okay? So I will uh, wait until tomorrow. Uh, si quieren, también traigan ustedes una oración as a homework. Una oración en activo y una oración la transforman esa misma oración en voz pasiva. Para mañana, traigan una así para ver si la podemos corregir o si está correcta, okay? Okay. Do you okay. have any okay. question right now? Not too sure. Okay, then I will see you tomorrow at 7.55. Nice to meet you all. And hopefully uh, we are going to learn a lot, okay? Have a nice evening. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night.